Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. The topic is the island of Lamu, Kenya, a reservoir of living Islamic traditional culture. There are a number of smaller communities in the Islamic world which have largely preserved their traditional townscapes and have sustained their local Muslim heritage, which we present as destinations of special interest to Muslim travelers and others who would like to explore and experience Islamic culture while enjoying a comfortable tourist experience to the best international standards. Lamu town seems almost ethereal as you approach it from the water, with its shop fronts and mosques creeping out from behind a forest of dow masts. Up close, the illusion shatters and the town becomes a hive of activity, from the busy waterfront with heavy wooden carts wheeled to and fro, and where cats wait for scraps from the fishermen, to the pungent labyrinth of donkey-wide alleyways along which women whisper by in full-length black buoy-buoy robes. Your nostrils are assaulted with blue smoke from meat grilling over open fires and the woody scent of the old shutters on houses built of coral stones. Thus, a recent visitor recorded his impressions of the principal settlement of Lamu, one of a cluster of islands hugging the Kenyan coast near the border with Somalia. The historical core of its old town is the best preserved Swahili settlement in East Africa and retains its traditional way of life to a remarkable extent. The term Swahili is from the Arabic Sahel coast and refers to the hybrid African-Arab Islamic culture of coastal city-states which developed from the early Islamic period onwards and stretched some 3,000 kilometres from Somalia to Mozambique. Linked by sea with Arabia, the Persian Gulf and Western India by seasonally alternating monsoon winds which enabled regular predictable communications and trade back and forth across the northern Indian Ocean and along its coasts. Lamu has been inhabited continuously for over 700 years. It was first mentioned by an Arab traveller, Abu al Mahasini, who met a judge from Lamu in Mecca in 1441 as an important trading and religious centre. It was invaded by the Portuguese in 1505 in the course of their gaining control of the northern Indian Ocean, but in the 1580s the inhabitants of Lamu led a rebellion against them, encouraged by Ottoman Turkish naval raids, and by 1652 the archipelago had become uh, an Omani protectorate. Portuguese Mombasa subsequently fell to Omani forces in 1698, and the island of Zanzibar a few years later the East African coast was then ruled from Muscat in Oman until its sultan transferred his capital to Zanzibar, the region's richest trading centre in 1840. In the late 19th century, Lamu and Kenya as a whole came under British colonial rule, finally gaining political independence in 1963. Lamu is now the only historical settlement on the East African coast to retain most of its original character relatively undisturbed by European colonisation and modernisation. Its trade has served as middlemen in Indian Ocean trade between Arab merchants and the people of the African interior, artisans, boat builders, masons and woodcarvers, all flourished here, as they still do today. Lamu Old Town, with its urban fabric of narrow winding streets and dignified whitewashed buildings with palm thatched roofs and plain coral walls concealing courtyards and interiors with int intricate plasterwork and massive carved wooden doors, was designated as a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 2001. Three kilometres to the south, the smaller town of Shila also preserves its Swahili architectural fabric and general character. Lamu, population 24,000 approximately, has no roads, just urban alleyways and footpaths. Donkeys are the principal mode of transportation. Residents and visitors move about on foot or by boat, and donkeys are used to transport goods and materials. Dows, with their great lanteen rigged sails, dominate the waterfront and are used by fishermen and for the transport of passengers and goods to neighbouring islands and the port of Mombasa further down the Kenyan coast. Islam is strong in Lamu, as along most of the Swahili coast since the 14th century, its people are mainly Sunni Muslims of the Shafi'i Madzab, school of jurisprudence. Their modest, conservative and close-knit society has managed to sustain its traditional values. Children attend Islamic schools to learn Arabic and the Quran. 
They are, they are imbued with important Islamic values and respect for elders, all intrinsic to Swahili tradition. Outdoors, women are covered with a black shuka or bui bui. Men wear a sarong or a kanzu, a white gown reaching to the feet, and a kofia, a delicately embroidered head cap. Islam is the warp and weft of life here and imbues the community with rich values of equality, mutual respect, and welcome to visitors. With the call to the midday dur prayer, all shops close and work ceases. At dusk, the evening call to the Maghrib prayer empties the seafront as men go home to their families via the mosque. There is not much nightlife in Lamu. The dense labyrinthine alley layout of the traditional Swahili town discourages tourists from penetrating very far. They tend to restrict themselves to the waterfront, the market square and fort, and the main street close behind. Alcohol is banned in public and at home and is only available in a restricted number of licensed tourist facilities. Lamu Island has 23 mosques, including the late 19th century Riyadhya Mosque, which is Sunni, and the Ithna Ashiri Mosque, which is Shia. Most are modest vernacular structures, recognizable by the distinctive whitewashed conical minarets. Sheikh Al Habib Swale ibn Alawi Jamal Al Lail, 1853 to 1936, a Sharif, descendant of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him with family and Alawiya Tarakat connections to the Hadramaut in the Yemen, settled on Lamu in the 1880s and became a highly respected religious teacher. He was a reformer who encouraged education among ex-slaves and the marginalized and had great success in gathering students around him. In 1892, he built the Riyadhya Mosque and its associated madrasa. After his death, his sons continued to maintain the madrasa which is now the longest continuously functioning and one of the most influential Islamic teaching institutions in the Swahili world. Sufi tarikats are also an integral aspect of Islam in Lamu and the entire Swahili coast. And Sheikh Al Habib Swale is the most venerated Sufi leader in the archipelago. His descendants are keepers of his tomb. The Riyadhya Mosque has an important manuscript collection, the richest in the region, which includes important texts in Kiswahili, Ajami, the Swahili language written in Arabic characters. It forms a unique part of the Kenyan, East African and African Islamic heritage and has recently been digitised and catalogued with the support of the British Library Endangered Archive Program and in collaboration with the University of Cape Town, South Africa. Access to the entire collection is now freely available through the internet. As is the custom along the entire Muslim Swahili East African coast, the celebration of the birth, life and lessons of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is a major aspect of both personal devotion and public worship in the Lamu archipelago. The Prophet is venerated as the binding force of religion and the intercessor at the Day of Judgment the Riyadhya Mosque is the centre for the Lamu Mavlidi festival held every year during the last week of the month of the Prophet's birth. Beside its mosques, other historic buildings in the old town of note are the early 19th century fort of the Sultan of Pate on the seafront, the excellent Lamu Museum and the Swahili House Museum, which gives visitors an inside glimpse of traditional life in a local home. A number of important archaeological sites in the archipelago also shed light on local culture and history. Excavations in the 1980s at Shanga on Pate Island indicate that Muslims lived here from the late 8th century to the early 19th century and onwards. Here also are the ruins of one of the earliest coral stone mosques on the Swahili coast, dating from the first half of the 11th century. Ruins of an Islamic settlement dated 15th to the 16th century are located at Takwa on nearby Manda Island. Lamu has a well-developed hospitality infrastructure and comprehensive information for visitors is readily available on the internet. Most of its tourist accommodation is comprised of sensitively refurbished traditional Swahili, Swahili houses run as reasonably priced guest houses. There are also private boutique-style villas and resort properties and secluded high-end holidays, retreats, the internationally rich and famous. 
Barack Hussein Obama honeymooned here. Visitors enjoy a great range of places to savour the local culinary treats derived from the diverse cultures which have blended in the island over the centuries, with an emphasis on fresh seafood, inherently halal, coconuts and tropical spices and fruits and rice. Lamu can only be accessed from within Kenya. From Nairobi there are daily flights, either direct or with a short stop in Malindi. Flights also live from Mombasa. One flies into a little airstrip on Manda with transfers to and from Lamu, just opposite by boat. In spite of pressures of development and the inevitable intrusion of politics, Lamu today remains as mystical, exotic and as serene as ever. Culture, history and custom are blended into a truly unique way of life. Here the wisdom of its Muslim past plays a part in the presence. The pace of life measured by the progress of the graceful Taoists that sail among its islands and whose predecessors first brought Islam to these shores.